You've probably heard of our ancient cousins, the Neanderthals, but how much do you actually know about them? From powerful eyesight to contributing to modern day diseases, here are seven surprising facts about Neanderthals. Listen closely because you might just have Neanderthal DNA. Number seven, inbreeding was common. Many people think that Neanderthals weren't very smart. According to Kelly Harris of Stanford University, who led a study on the genetic makeup of Neanderthals, inheriting Neanderthal DNA may have come at a cost. DNA extracted from the Eurasian hominid remains prior to Harris's study had already proven that they were less genetically diverse and far more inbred than Homo sapiens. The Neanderthal population remained small for thousands of years, and the tendency for relatives to meet seems to have been common. When anatomically modern humans left Africa somewhere between 50 and 100,000 years ago, they began interbreeding with Neanderthals, and their previously distinct genomes became mixed. The modern-day contribution of Neanderthal genes is uneven, however, representing a small fraction of today's non-African populations. While Neanderthal genes are missing from some regions of the human genome, they're pretty concentrated in others. Harris and her colleague Rasmus Nielsen believe that this pattern is caused by natural selection. For instance, weakly harmful mutations were more likely to persist among the Neanderthals' small population, where natural selection was probably less effective. After being introduced to the human gene pool, however, those mutations were more likely to be lost to natural selection. The weak mutations that Neanderthals commonly carried made them up to 40% less fit than humans in evolutionary terms. In other words, they were 40% less likely than humans to reproduce and pass on their genes. While some Neanderthal gene variants are thought to be beneficial in a modern context, according to Harris and Nielsen, some present-day humans may be at a slight disadvantage due to their partial Neanderthal heritage, namely a 1% lower reproductive fitness among non-Africans. Several contemporary signs point to the Neanderthals having engaged in routine inbreeding. Endangered species and fragmented habitats face similar problems as the Neanderthals, including low genetic diversity and the accumulation of harmful mutations. The smaller the group and the more restricted, the more problems they're going to have. Not good news for a lot of species. Number six, great vision, not so good social skills. Neanderthals' brains were roughly the same size as ours, but unlike humans, they were ultimately unable to adapt well enough to changing environments and circumstances to survive. Why? One possible answer was found in their large eye sockets during a study led by Robin Dunbar of the University of Oxford. To be able to see in the dim, foggy north, Neanderthals probably had to devote a substantial amount of brain power to their eyesight. Pretty interesting, right? Additionally, Neanderthals had larger bodies than humans, and this also required extra brain power. The result? Limited gray matter to devote to other tasks. The development of their frontal lobes, which are vital for social interaction, may have been limited by this demand for energy, in turn making them capable of managing social groups of just 115 people, compared to the 150 typical of our human ancestors. Neanderthals might have survived if they had been able to socialize better. According to Dunbar's colleague, Eulanid Pierce, coping with harsh Eurasian environments may have proven to be too much for our distant cousins, who had fewer friends to rely on than we did during times of need. During the Ice Age, Neanderthals were especially vulnerable to a shortage of resources, particularly food. While the link between big eyes and brain usage may seem like a plausible theory, Robert Barton of Durham University in the UK says that it's unreliable. He points out that certain species with big eyes have pretty small brains, including the Tarsier. However, he also admits that Dunbar's theory could be credible, we just don't know for sure. And now for number five. But first, if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell before you leave. We have lots of new videos coming up. By the way, did you know that Neanderthals also wore body glitter? Who knew? Number five, not great rabbit hunters. Neanderthals were skilled mammoth hunters, but the benefits of this skill proved to be limited. In 2013, a research team led by biologist John Fa of the United Kingdom's Dural Wildlife Conservation Trust examined animal bones at various sites across the Iberian Peninsula. While studying the remains, which spanned some 50,000 years, they noticed that the bones of rabbits became common around 30,000 years ago. Around the same time, Neanderthals started to disappear from the area as humans began to pour in. 
According to National Geographic, also around that time, populations of Iberian large animals decrease in number, possibly due to climate change or because they were increasingly hunted by humans. This would have led to rabbits becoming an increasingly important food source for the Neanderthals, who never adjusted to hunting the small prey. Fa's conclusions received support from John Shea, a paleoanthropologist at Stony Brook University in New York City, who cited people's tendency to underestimate the difficulty of hunting rabbits. It's not easy, and those things are fast. Shea also pointed out that when it comes to hunting mammoths, which Neanderthals were accustomed to doing, the risk was low and the return was high, whereas hunting rabbits yielded a tiny return and took up a lot of time and energy. Just ask Elmer Fudd. In addition to the change in ratio of risks versus rewards, the hunting equipment that the Neanderthals used was ill-equipped for catching small game. Early modern humans, on the other hand, used weaponry that was better suited for catching rabbits, such as spear throwers, complex projectile weapons, and possibly even bows and arrows, and they were much better off. Neanderthals may have been able to create traps out of string, but it's likely that the investment proved to be impractical or too costly. Like I said before, trapping takes a lot of time and energy, not that I've ever done it, and Neanderthals required twice as many calories to survive and stay warm than humans. These findings were challenged by an unconvinced anthropologist from Ohio's Kenyon College named Bruce Hardy. He stated that he had difficulty believing that after surviving for 250,000 years, Neanderthals didn't adjust their hunting strategies or rely on an alternative source of food, such as plants, especially since they had thousands of years to do so. That just doesn't really make sense. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number 4. Herpes According to estimates, one in six Americans between the ages of 14 and 49 suffer from an STD known as genital herpes, which is caused by two viruses known as herpes simplex 1 and herpes simplex 2. Scientific research shows that genital herpes is not simply a modern disease, but that it dates back thousands of years. Several theories surround the reasons behind the extinction of Neanderthals, and herpes is a suspected contributor. After analyzing pathogen genomes and ancient DNA, researchers Simon Underdown from Oxford Brookes University and Charlotte Holdcroft from the University of Cambridge determined that Neanderthals suffered from genital herpes. Even worse, they suspect that the Neanderthals inherited the disease from modern humans. Side note, in all fairness, research has also shown that us humans received several disease-causing genes from Neanderthals. Anyway, I digress. As a result of the interbreeding between Neanderthals and humans, most of us carry between 2 and 5% Neanderthal DNA. In addition to the possibility that we gave herpes to the Neanderthals, we may also be responsible for gifting them with tuberculosis and tapeworms. Whoops! Number 3. They may have strengthened our immune systems. Throughout this video so far, you've probably gathered that our ancestors vacated Africa and migrated to Europe and Asia, then proceeded to interbreed with Neanderthals. Good times, people, good times. One benefit that was enjoyed by human Neanderthal hybrids was a heightened ability to ward off disease, thanks to the possession of gene variants their parents did not have. Fresh blood in the gene pool. A genetic analysis conducted by Michael Daneman of the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology, along with his colleagues, concluded that the hardy immune systems possessed by modern humans are tied with fragments of Neanderthal DNA. To be honest, it was a give and take. Interbreeding with Neanderthals may have assisted the modern human's ability to fight infection, but it also made us more prone to allergies. Scientific evidence points to the possibility of humans having interbred not only with Neanderthals, but with an ancient species known as the Denisovans, whom are also partially credited for contributing toward our resilient and robust immune systems. Thanks, guys! Number 2. Good Teeth For a long time, scientists thought Neanderthals were primarily carnivores. However, recent scientific evidence points to the contrary that Neanderthals were avid plant eaters, and that they even indulged in certain herbs such as yarrow and chamomile for their healing properties. Discovering that Neanderthals self-medicated means that they ingested plants with no nutritional value, further suggesting that they had a thorough understanding of their environment. Put simply, they may have been more resourceful and intelligent than humans previously thought them to be. See, everyone's still debating this. Additionally, experts recently discovered that Neanderthals had healthier teeth than their human contemporaries. Even with equivalent diets, Neanderthals lost less teeth than humans. This is surprising, since it would be only natural to assume that with a lack of modern dental care, 
ancient species would have suffered more issues. According to Tim Weaver and Cassandra Gilmore, researchers from the University of California who examined the teeth of modern humans, Neanderthals, and other primates, such as chimpanzees and orangutans, modern humans have the worst teeth. What? On the other hand, Neanderthals had fewer cavities and kept their teeth longer. Additional studies indicate that they may have even used toothpicks to keep their teeth clean. Number one, depression and heart attacks is their fault. Well, sort of. It's no secret that modern society is plagued by a myriad of health problems, including cardiovascular disease, nicotine addiction, and depression. These issues could have originated from Neanderthals, according to recent findings from the Vanderbilt University and the University of Washington. According to Joshua Akey, co-author of this study and University of Washington geneticist, you can blame your Neanderthal ancestry a little, but not too much, for whatever range of afflictions you have. Akey and fellow researcher John Capra examined the medical records and genes of 28,000 people. The medical conditions suffered by the subjects, coupled by the traceability of their DNA to partial Neanderthal roots, led them to this discovery. Extinct hominids have evidently passed down a surprising number of genes that are presently linked to a wide range of conditions, although the effect was admittedly somewhat small. However slightly, the presence of Neanderthal DNA increased a subject's risk for inheriting any of the three ailments. Aki sums up the effects as an ironic combination of pervasive but modest. Thanks for watching! Hope you learned something new and exciting about Neanderthals today! Make sure you let me know in the comments! Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.